Hi everyone, my name is Miriam Sue and I'm from the Medica Zone. Today I'm going to be talking about Huntington's disease. I'm going to be talking about what the disease is, the history of the disease, the pathophysiology, as well as some potential cures for this disease. So Huntington's disease affects the nervous system and it causes the brain cells to break down. And Huntington's is a genetic disease and it's caused by too many glutamines in the fourth chromosome. Um, currently, Huntington's is fatal and there are no permanent treatments. And its symptoms start to appear in the age range of 30 to 50, which means when people are in this age range, they suddenly develop these Huntington's symptoms and then they die very quickly. So here is a Punnett square and Huntington's is dominant. So if we look at this Punnett square, we're gonna look at this hypothetical situation where the father is Huntington's positive, but the, the mother is Huntington's negative and their offspring has a 50% chance of inheriting Huntington's. Also, Huntington's depends on the number of gluten repeats. So if you have more than 40, you are guaranteed to develop Huntington's. But I also want to look at this borderline range, which is from 27 to 39 repeats. And it's called the borderline range because if parents aren't in this range, they won't have Huntington's, but their offspring can because um, through the process of meiosis and then fertilization, the number of repeats can increase and then the child will develop Huntington's. So Huntington's was named after Dr. George Huntington, and he published this famous account of the disease. He listed all these symptoms, and he was also the same person who observed that Huntington's is genetic. Um, Huntington's was traced back to Tasmania, Venezuela, and currently Huntington's affects white populations more than it affects African and Asian populations. So as I mentioned before, Huntington's causes the brain cells to break down and it's most prominent in the striatum of the brain. And the striatum is most important for mood, motivation, and movement. So here are two MRI scans and they are monkey brains. So the brain on the left um, has is from a monkey that has Huntington's and the one on the right does not have Huntington's. And we can see that there are these enlarged ventricles on the brain that has Huntington's. And this is because the brain cells have, break, have broken down and now there's this extra space for these ventricles to form. Scientists have also uh, found that Huntington's uh, has negative effects on brain activity. So there is this experiment comparing two people. Um, one is the healthy control who doesn't have Huntington's and the second one is the person that has Huntington's. And through these fMRI scans, we can see that people that don't have Huntington's consistently have higher brain activity than the people that have Huntington's. And this is because uh, in healthy people, they have healthy neurons and they can act efficiently, which means that their neurons can um, complete more processes and more um, reactions in a given amount of time. And more reactions results in higher brain activity. So symptoms of Huntington's can appear in the psychiatric, judgment, movement, and physical forms. So the most prominent symptom is chorea and it's uncontrolled movement and can result in twitching. And then people will start to, to develop problems of thinking, judgment, and at the end, because the nervous system has broken down, people have trouble swallowing, eating, walking, and speaking. And a combination of these symptoms results in critical care for our Huntington's patients and also leads to the, to the eventual death of the individual. So I'm gonna talk about how this mutation causes Huntington's symptoms. So there are currently three different theories and there is not one concrete theory that scientists have agreed on. So the first one that I'm gonna to present to you is the one that I think is the most promising. So as you can see in this diagram, the, there is a mutated gene which has too many glutamines and this gene 
is translated to produce the full-length Huntington protein. And because this protein is mutated, it is cleaved and it becomes all these different fragments. And these fragments of the of the mutated protein clumps together and can travel throughout the cell, whether it goes to the nucleus or stays in the cytoplasm, it has all these different negative effects. So in the nucleus, it has negative effects on the transcription of RNA, which RNA is used to code for proteins. And then also in the cytoplasm, the mutated inclusions also have negative impacts on the synthesis of proteins. And some proteins that it can affect are the microtubules and dynein, which is used in the axonal transport system. And also it can negatively impact mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of the cell. And because all of these things are affected in the cell, the cell can no longer function correctly and these nerve cells will die. So there are two other theories. One of them is a toxic internal fragment. So scientists believe that the mutated gene has, especially the elongated part of the glutamine chain, is the one that is a toxic tail. And because of this toxic tail, um, it has different effects in the cell and causes the cell to die. The third theory is called glutamate excitotoxicity. And excitotoxicity is when there is excessive chemical signaling between nerve cells. And because these nerve cells are always activated, it causes these nerve cells to die. So there are no current uh, permanent treatments, but there are some treatments for the symptoms of Huntington's. So one of them that has been tested and approved is called tetrabenazine, and this one treats chorea. Um, and the second one that is currently being tested is called coenzyme Q10, and it enhances mitochondrial function, which slows down the progression of Huntington's. So there are two um, other treatments that are being tested. One of them is RNA. So for RNA, there's two different um, ways that RNA can potentially treat Huntington's. They're listed here. And these RNA treatments are most active in the cytoplasm. And what happens in these treatments is that these RNA aces, which degrade RNA, these RNA aces are going to degrade the mutated Huntington protein. And by degrading this protein, it will not allow for the formation and synthesis of the mutated protein. And there are two um, DNA treatments. So they're called zinc finger proteins and also CRISPR. So these are active in the nucleus and these two um, ways can target the mutated gene, the mutated DNA. And by targeting this mutated DNA, it um, does not allow for the transcription of this mutated DNA into the RNA, which means that it cuts off um, this um, the pathway for this protein to form at the very start. There is more research being done on the cures, and one of them is optogenetics, which is when neurons are um, deactivated using light beams. And one that I find particularly interesting is the mobilization of stem cells. And as we know, the cells of the nervous system, especially the ones in the brain, cannot be regenerated like our skin cells do. So if scientists are able to find a way to mobilize stem cells from other parts of the body so that we can regrow our brain cells, this could be another potential cure for Huntington's. So um, in this presentation, we've learned that Huntington's is a genetic disease and it's caused by the excess repetition of glutamine in the Huntington gene. And it causes the nerve cell and brain cells to break down. And although there is currently no permanent cure, we know that if a permanent cure is developed, it is a bright future for the genetic modification in humans, as well as the utilization of stem cells to regenerate nerve cells. And here are my sources. So I hope you guys learned something about Huntington's and thank you for listening. Bye.